Hey guys, and welcome back to the School Finesse Podcast. I'm your host, Amen. Today, I'm answering a question. A viewer from Maryland asks, how do you balance school and a relationship? I'll answer this question, discuss six red flags you should be mindful of, and then we'll have our new six. We'll discuss what some colleges did last week to prepare for Hurricane Florence. So first things first, how do you balance school and a relationship? I had to consult the experts on this one. I found an article written by Malia Brown. When she wrote the article, she was a student at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. She was majoring in political science and journalism. In her article titled, Let's Talk Dating, How to Successfully Manage Your Relationship and Studies in College, she presents three tips to keep a relationship afloat while in school. We're going to get straight to these points, so here we go. Tip number one is to make sure that you and your partner are on the same page. Many times we start school, we have our goals laid out, we have our head on straight, we've got our schedule in order, and then we get into this relationship with someone who isn't on the same page. They don't understand our goals, they end up slowing us down, and we lose track. But Malia suggests, quote, if you're motivated to get your assignments done and your partner is lazy, there will be conflict because he or she will tend to demand more of your time and be less understanding of you trying to be on your grind. But if you find someone who has the same hustle as you, then they will understand because they have to get their work done also. End quote. If you're getting into a relationship, find someone who compliments you and who will push you towards your goals rather than away from them. Tip number two, organize your week. At the beginning of the week, write out your study times, your assignment due dates, professor meetings, and all the rest. Try to get your work done during the week and save the weekend for hanging out with your partner. In case the weekend doesn't work for you and your partner, talk about a day that works and schedule a certain amount of work to complete before your scheduled date. Let the date with your partner be a treat for finishing your work. If you don't finish because of laziness, social media abductions or similar distractions, cancel the appointment with your partner and catch up on your work. This practice will encourage you to be productive and limit your distractions so you can earn that date. Here's our final tip. Tip number three, stay focused. Believe it or not, you're a student first. Your aim is graduation and you have your goals set up. That doesn't mean you can't have a relationship But make sure you don't lose focus on your school goals while you're trying to be hashtag relationship goals. These are the three tips from Malia Brown, who was a student at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. A link to her article, Let's Talk Dating, How to Successfully Manage Your Relationship and Studies in College, will be linked in the description. We're not finished yet. Some people may scoff at all the relationship tips and say they don't even have time for a relationship. So these people understand that a relationship is time consuming. And because you don't want to waste your time, you make sure that your relationship doesn't have a ton of red flags, which will quickly lead to disaster. Sophie Herlock, a student at Xavier University, wrote about six red flags you should be careful of in college relationships. Here they are. Red flag number one, people warn you about them. If you're dating someone and you're introducing them to people and later on somebody pulls you aside and says, hey, um, are you sure that's your partner over there? Uh, Well, if I were you, I'd be a little careful. So if someone comes up to you and says that, I'm not saying that you have to dump your partner immediately. You should take extra precaution and pay attention. Think about it. If people are warning you about them, maybe there's something that you don't know yet. Be careful. Red flag number two, your partner doesn't make you a priority. Sophie says, quote, making someone a priority doesn't mean that they have to give you every second of their undivided attention and devotion. That would be creepy, unhealthy, and just plain annoying. But what it does mean is that they attempt to make you a part of their life. So being a priority doesn't mean that you have to Be on a phone all day with your partner, texting them all day, or attached to them at the waist. No. 
you're a student or your partner's a student or you both are students, understand that your partner has to be devoted to their schoolwork, meaning that they won't be attached to their phone all day, but they should not totally dismiss you from their schedule. Red flag number three, they continually bring up their ex. If your partner is constantly bringing up their ex, that means that they are not totally over them. They miss them or they wish you were them. This doesn't mean that you and your partner aren't compatible. Maybe your partner just needs some extra time to get over their previous relationship. I've got three more red flags for you, but before I continue, I wanna remind you that many colleges and universities have counseling centers where you can go for advice, tips, or just to vent about whatever topic and a relationship can be one of these topics for discussion. All right, red flag number four. They drink excessively or change when they drink. We know in college, some people step out of their comfort zone and try new things like drinking. We also know the effects of drinking and especially the effects of excessive drink. This red flag here has much to do with your partner taking responsibility for themselves and knowing their limits. If you have to carry your partner home after every event you attend, you might want to talk to them about being more responsible for themselves. Their lack of responsibility can also trickle down and affect their sense of responsibility in their school and domestic life. Sophie adds, quote, alcohol abuse or hard drug use is inexcusable and a deal breaker when it comes to dating. If you get around a person who has this problem, cut them loose sooner rather than later, end quote. A red flag number five that you should be careful of in college relationships is a lack of trust. If you cannot trust this person, you cannot have peace in your relationship. You always wonder what they are doing, what they aren't doing, if they're lying, or if they're telling you the truth. It just leads to arguments, chaos, and disaster. If you don't trust or can't trust your partner, why are you still with them? Think about it. And now we have the final red flag, red flag number six. Alarms should be going off in your mind if something just feels off. Maybe you don't feel comfortable or you're unsure if you want to be in a relationship. Something just isn't right with you or your partner. You're just not feeling it. Here's Sophie's story. Quote, just last year, I was seeing a guy and in the back of my mind, something didn't feel right. Instead of cutting it off right then and there, I continued seeing him only for him to disappear off the face of the planet a few months later, end quote. She spent a couple of months with this guy, maybe building a relationship that she thought would last. You guys know how the first couple months go. You get a text from your partner and you almost melt. You exchange gifts, you spend extra time together, you maybe introduce them to a couple of your friends, all of that stuff. And all of a sudden, the person just disappears. Well, here's a suggestion. Take a step back. In fact, if you can, before you decide to date someone you just met, be a casual friend first. You'll catch more of these red flags before you end up in a relationship trying to find the smoothest way out. Those are six red flags that you should be mindful of in a college relationship. Thanks to Sophie Herlock, a student at Xavier University who wrote the article on this topic. So there you have it. That's how you can balance school in a relationship. But hang on, we're not finished yet. We have our news fix coming up. We are going to talk about what some colleges did in the midst of Hurricane Florence. But before then, we have our challenge for the week. In the comment section, let us know if you've been in a relationship while in college and feel free to add some of your tips. Now on to the news fix. So last week, the North Carolina area experienced Hurricane Florence. Residents prepared for flooding, windy conditions, and fallen trees. Some people fled the area, but others stayed home. Of course, there are some colleges and universities in North Carolina. So what did they do? Well, some colleges and universities closed as early as Tuesday to give students enough time to evacuate. Some of these institutions include Duke University, North Carolina State, and the University of North Carolina Wilmington. Many of these universities plan to reopen between Sunday night and Tuesday morning. Before the storm became violent, some students at East Carolina University, ECU, used anemometers to measure wind speeds. Shout out to these five ECU students, Samantha Levine, Megan Bowles, Aaron News, Dana Pulowski, and Isaiah Goldman for using an opportunity to learn something new. That's all for this week's News Fix. A link to the news articles will be in the description. Also in the description will be Malia Brown's article, Let's Talk Dating how to successfully manage your relationship and studies in college. 
and Sophie Herlock's article, Six Red Flags in College Relationships, all in the description. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share with a friend who you want to succeed. I'm your host, Amen, signing off.